five years of God's faithfulness. My favorite area in Union Church of Manila is the stairwell. Normally, church attenders find comfort in our towering and majestic sanctuary, the cozy library, or in the tranquil prayer garden that invites a momentary retreat from the chaotic bustle of Legaspi Street. However, I go to the stairwell, losing myself in the story it tells. You see, starting at the bottom floor, rising all the way to the fifth floor, the stairwell displays the deep-rooted history of UCM, reaching all the way back to 1898. The walls hold names of people, most of whom I've never met, some still living, and others who have left for a better home. Sometimes as I survey the timeline and its pictures, I find myself wishing I could steal a few moments with Reverend Foley before he became a casualty of World War II and the shelling of Manila in 1945. I wish I could listen to the wisdom he gained as he led the congregation through the devastating effects of the conflict. I would love to hear the Sunday sermon of the succeeding pastor, Dr. Harry Fonger, in 1946, when he preached to an ever-dwindling congregation of 37 after the increased diaspora and death of UCM members. I imagine the uncontained joy in 1951 that filled the opening of the newly renovated building that was all but destroyed during the war. The inscription on the stairwell tells me that this sanctuary was as lovely as the first time it rose in 1907. As I continue my contemplative journey up the stairs, I think about how many lives were impacted in 1970 by the myriad of church projects aimed at providing relief to the Carmona Squatter Resettlement Site. I wonder what the Pineapple Building, designed in 1975 by Jose Zaragoza, looked like on the inside. My ascent up the stairs captivates me in a remarkable story. Clearly, God is interested in history, mandating that Israel's history, the life of Christ, the history of the early church be recorded in Scripture for future generations. Lists of historical accounts fill hundreds of pages in Scripture. These descriptions were primarily given as a testimony of God's story to the nations. UCM's past doesn't possess tales of prophets in the dens of lions or the rise of an entire nation from slavery to a kingdom. However, its long and colorful history also tells of God's great story. The story includes thousands of people over the span of 105 years who came from all over the globe, somehow finding themselves connected to a diverse international community of faith in the ever-evolving city of Manila. They worshipped, gave, built, taught, fed, healed, and loved as they labored in the ministry of UCM. Their sacrificial service has made a profound kingdom impact, not only in the Philippines, but also to the nations of the world. When I'm in the stairwell, I see their faces. I almost hear their voices echoing through the rising chamber as they offer praises to the one who graciously used them and their church in His story of redemption. When I'm in the stairwell, this great cloud of witnesses challenges and encourages me. As I continue my climb to the fifth floor, my thoughts go higher, this time much higher. I am reminded that the story of UCM has only survived by God's grace. 
In a world where many institutions, including churches, have relatively short shelf lives, it is remarkable to see a church perjure in the headwinds of seemingly endless obstacles, not only in its historical context, but also in its basic composition. Because of the transient nature of the international community in Makati, UCM's congregation has remained in constant flux. Weekly goodbyes have continued to be part of our fabric for 105 years. Furthermore, UCM draws people from extremely diverse cultural and denominational backgrounds. Most church growth experts will tell you that this type of environment is not ideal for building and sustaining a church. Yet despite these ever-present challenges, the Lord has not only sustained UCM, He enables it to thrive. Each week, UCM hosts around 1,500 people from roughly 40 different nations and 40 different denominational backgrounds. It is involved in scores of humanitarian and evangelistic projects, both locally and internationally. It regularly welcomes world-class talent in a variety of different fields. Recently, someone asked me, how does UCM thrive in the face of so much transition and flux? I replied, I have no idea other than by God's favor and grace. UCM has survived for 105 years, and it thrives only because He allows it to. Psalm 127.1 reminds us, Unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. My mind scurries all the way down six flights of stairs back to 1914, when members of the Methodist Church and the Presbyterian Church gathered together in prayer, believing the Lord was leading them to establish Union Church of Manila. Out of the prayers of these saints, the Lord started building something spectacular in the heart of the Philippines. I'm sure they never imagined the beautiful house that he would build. I'm also quite confident that they too would love going to the stairwell. May our great builder continue to bless and add many more amazing stories to the UCM stairwell.